Devstalker. This is one of the most enjoyable audio dramas I've ever listened to. I wanted to speak about this for a very, very long time. And now I'm going to do it. But before we begin, I need to put this differentiation down right now. This is Deathstalker, the book series made by Simon R. Green, not the 1980s movie series that is terrible piece of shit you can see on YouTube right now because it's that bad, you can watch it for free, okay? Book series, not the movie series, okay? Deathstalker. Okay. So without further ado, let's get into the intro. The Deathstalker series is a collection of books written by the British author Simon R. Green. I believe it was written in the mid-90s to the early 2000s. The book is broken up into two sagas. The first saga contains five books and the second saga contains three books and they tell one overall arching story. Okay, so I'll just start the books now. First one, Deathstalker, solo name. Second one, Deathstalker Rebellion, Deathstalker War. Deathstalker Honor, Deathstalker Legacy. That's the first saga. The second saga starts 200 years afterwards and it starts with Deathstalker Legacy, Deathstalker Return and Deathstalker Coda. That totals in eight books telling one overall story. Now before we begin, I need to stress this out. This is based on the offer series of books, written books, but what I listened to was the audio drama series produced by Defiance Audio and Graphic Audio. These two are audio production houses. They take books and they do make them into audio performances with high special effects, uh, a range of characters, uh, you know, taking all the character roles. It makes the experience much more dynamic, much more enjoyable. And for those of you who are listening to the wildly popular zombie podcast, Where Alive, which I will be reviewing in the future, by the way, you know what I'm talking about because it's the same production values you've got there in this series as well. So if you liked We're Alive, I'm already going to tell you, you need to check out the Deathstalker graphic audio drama production. And that's what I'm going to be talking about here. Let's continue. Okay, so the story is about our main character called Owen Deathstalker. He's part of royalty. He's a mind historian and he you know, he's kind of the um, unwilling hero. He just likes a little life, he likes a little riches, he lives on his own planet, and he's enjoying his life of just luxury, just fucking around, being a historian, that's fine. Now, the universe this is set in is ruled by this tyrannical psychopath queen called a uh, Queen Lionstone, and everyone, she has a nickname called the Iron Bitch, which is hilarious, man. Everyone calls her the Iron Bitch because she's a complete psychopath, murders, kills, he's just completely insane. Now the story starts off with Owen Deathstalker come enjoying his life of royalty and luxury and one day the Queen puts a bounty on his head and says he's a traitor to the throne. Takes away all his possessions, throws out his royalty and now he's an outcast, he's a wanted man and he starts on the run and obviously it's one of those stories where he's trying to find out why, what's happened, why is he on the run now, why is the Queen put a bounty on his head and as he goes on his journey, he finds, you know, some some colourful characters. It's very action orientated. It's a lot of fun. And it starts off with one of those, let's throw over the spoiled regime, the, the evil monarchy. But then as the story unfolds, it turns out to be more about destiny and saving the entire universe. Sounds kind of lame, but it's bloody awesome. Trust me. Let's start with the cast and the characters. Now, there's a whole cast of characters. I could say that it comes down to four characters, but I don't want to get into spoilers for this, believe me. So instead of talking about the characters specifically, I'm going to talk about the overarching themes instead. Now, we have a wide range of characters here. Owen Deathstalk is a main character, which I do really enjoy. He's a really cool character. Uh, I don't use the word cool. He's a really funny character, really jovial character, and he's a hero that I can get behind. The other characters that are in his team, the other three, I'm actually not going to mention them. But what I do want to mention is that one of the shining points of this story, and I didn't even realise this until after I finished reading it, this is 
is one of the best gender balanced uh, stories I've ever read so far where the female characters, they actually take a big bulk of the story. The main antagonist, Queen Lionstone, she's a female. Uh, two of the sidekicks of his team are female. A lot of the major characters are female. And believe me, man, these females, they ain't, they ain't prissy. They are hardcore. Very action-orientated. I mean, th these female characters give Wonder Woman a run for her money. And I loved it. I didn't even see them as female characters. Only when I finished it, I was like, you know what? This has a lot of female characters, more female than male. And the male characters are, the, are more or less the central characters to the actual plot point. But the female characters are so integral to the story, I was really impressed. There is a lot of sex and violence. Ultra-violence. Ultra-violence. <laughs> but, yeah, I, I actually think this puts women in a good light. And I honestly, I didn't... It doesn't even become apparent when you're rereading the story. It's just written so well. It could have been male characters, but it works better as female. And, you know, I just have to point it out as a shining point. And some of the people I recommend this to also agreed with me in retrospect. Very well written. Now, the character, the character roles as well, they hit on a lot of interesting topics. Rape, genocide, and a lot of different alien species and intergalactic stuff. It's a science fiction story. It has a war theme to it. It, it, it kind of seems like a mix. It feels, it's got a Game of Thrones feeling mixed with a science fiction feeling, mixed with a lot of anime superhero elements. You get a nice, nice pot of stuff here. And again, I'm being very, you know, superficial with the characters because I don't want to go too deep into them. But the characters are really good. They're really interesting. They have a lot of fun. Their dialogue, the dialogue is written really well. So Mr. Simon R. Green, he writes really good dialogue. He, reads, he writes really fun, interesting characters. And I was engaged by the characters, you know? Um, the only criticism I have is maybe they're a little bit superficial. This, this whole series doesn't get too deep into anything. But there's enough meat there for me to enjoy on the intellectual level. But I understand a lot of people, this, a lot of people complain this is too superficial, but... This is an action adventure story, so you know, we're not gonna go too deep into character analysis. But enough is there that I and a lot of the themes are there to make the characters and the characterization very good, even though some characters will annoy you, particularly Owen's love interest, which I can't remember her name right now. But anyway, now as I said before, I when I initially read the synopsis. I didn't like what I read of this story. I thought, yeah, it sounded so generic and passe. I thought, I ain't going to read this. But that audio production, I just thought it was a normal audio book when I downloaded it. But the production just, the company called Graphic Audio, I'll just tell you a little bit about them. They work on different books. They even work for, um, they even take some DC comics, I think some Marvel comics, and they've made audio dramas in them. If you listen to audio books and you've never listened to audio drama before, this is a good introduction. If you're not even into all your books at all, this is probably the first thing I would introduce someone to listen to because the production value is so good. All the character acting, all the voice acting is just amazing. And you know, I love audio books anyway, but audio dramas are like a step above an audio book. Like for instance, you know, seeing a normal movie is like going to the cinema and just watching a normal movie. Listen to an audio drama is like going to a cinema and go into IMAX 3D D-Box effect. That's what an audio drama is. And, you know, I keep on talking about the audio production, like the production makes the book. The story's good. The story's good enough, but the audio production just takes it to the next level. And I'll tell you right now, this as a written book, I don't think I would have enjoyed half as much because there's way too much going on. And audio dramas are usually slightly adapted anyway to because it needs to be written slightly different so each character has a different voice. This was good. This was done good. Very enjoyable. The audio production is absolutely phenomenal. Straight 10. Check this out just for that alone. You would be drawn in. I would drawn in. And it was a long ride. For all these eight books, consistently well done. A lot of praise there, but it's well deserved. Now, coming back to the story, sadly, this is where I get a little bit critical. The first five books, the first saga, so well-paced, so enjoyable. High-octane action, and it just always keeps you invested, always keeps you, you know, wanting more. And it ends on a very dark cliffhanger, which is not really a spoiler, but 
it makes you want to go and finish the story. And because the next saga set 200 years in between, you're thinking, is this really going to end? And it does. But that second saga, those last three books, it's a bit of a mess. I'm, I'm not going to lie. It just, it starts off with a whole new story with a whole new set of characters. And then they bring in the element from the last saga to wrap things up. By the time it was over, it felt like a mess. It, I just, and the actual ending, and it does end completely, but the actual ending, mm, I was kind of disappointed. You know, part of me wishes if it ended where the first saga ended, it might have been too dark, but I, it, it would have been tighter. You know, the second saga is still good, but it just, you have to start all over again with these whole new characters. Simon R. Green writes good characters, even though new characters are still enjoyable. But when everything starts to wrap up and they wrap up the whole franchise, I was kind of like, you know, this, you kind of, kind of a mess. So that's what I was disappointed with. You know, the second saga brings everything down a notch, which is unfortunate, but still enjoyable, even the second saga. But, you know, the first saga and second saga, they're on two different levels, you know? But kind of a warning and it's kind of a criticism, but honestly, it's the, it's, it's the saddest thing about the, the series. So honestly, I guess that kind of wraps, wraps this up into how I rate this book series and what do I think of it. Ugh, the first saga is an easy first class on its own. The second saga is more like an okay disappointment. So when you combine the two, the whole series for me is like a high solid B. You know, that second saga tries to bring it down, but it's still very high very enjoyable and you know it is very science fiction -y. it is very 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 science fiction -y. but i would still recommend this to people who like stories who like adventure who like action and you know this opened my mind to audio dramas and again to you guys who love wherever live that is a great audio drama with exceptionally high production values as well if you like that production and you want to see a good story taken to the next level check this out but I really do highly recommend it. I was so in, I so enjoyed this show for the themes, so many themes, so many ideas, so many stories, and the pace is just good. I know some people that will really enjoy this that may not think they would, but you should check out Deathstalker. I think another downside is I had to get this audiobook series. Half of it was on Audible, half of it was from some other memes, which kind of pissed me off. It wasn't but. You can go to Graphic Audio's website and just get the whole series directly, but you know, get this, get this show by your means. You know, just check this shit out. So anyway, that's another episode of Tyro Media. Please like, comment, and subscribe. Also, go over to our Facebook page and like the Planet Tyro Facebook page. Link is in the description. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you guys on the next one. Peace out.